Vicky has taught me more about parenting than any other person on the planet, except maybe my own parents. And this is something she taught me years ago. Sometimes parents need a do-over. I think it was about a decade ago. At least. When yeah. I overheard in the hallway, the hallway right behind us here, an interaction between Vicky and our third son, Brennan. He was a teenager at the time. And you know how sometimes teenagers get tipped over a little bit by what their parents do or how the limits are set, whatever it was. He kind of stormed down the stairs to his bedroom. Vicky paused for a minute. I still remember you stayed there in the hall for just a little bit. This isn't the way you wanted the interaction to go. <laughs> and I heard her, her go downstairs and she knocked quietly on Brennan's door. She opened it up and said something along these lines. Brennan, that's not the way I wanted that to go. Can I have a do over? Wow, that was amazing. I'm just impressed. Just saying, where did that come from? Probably you. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I don't know. So. You know, as I was sitting there, I think I was doing laundry at the time, and I was just thinking, mm. why did I have to react so strongly, so quickly? I wish I would have done this. And um, I've been mm. studying some different things about how you're not going to change behavior unless you practice the behavior. And so it dawned on me that you go and you practice the do-over. Instead of just wishing you'd done it different, you actually go practice it differently. And so today we're talking yeah. about do-overs <laughs> for that reason. That, that impressed me so much, Vicki, because how often as parents do we do that? You have an interaction with your child. It's a little harsher than you intended it to be. It's not quite the outcome you were looking right. for. And instead of just ignoring that or feeling guilty about it, how about you do what Vicki did and just request a do-over? You know, Vic, I think this is a sign of a really healthy relationship. Yeah, if, if you know that you can make a mistake and do a do-over, you've got a pretty good relationship with that person. That's right. And this establishes a different level of relationship with your teenager, especially, mm -hmm. but even with younger kids. I think they need to learn that people make mistakes. Yeah. And you as a parent are going to make mistakes. Have you noticed? <laughs> Quite a few of them. You know, I love Meet the Robinsons. Oh, yeah animated Disney film, okay? Right. The Disney Pixar. It's about this family where there's some time travel involved. It's a really cute little story, but it's basically based on on the life and career of Walt Disney. Interestingly enough, but there's a scene in the movie where the family is gathered around the dinner table and this young boy in the film makes a huge blunder. Mm -hmm. Okay? A big old mistake. And he makes a big mess. And, and as, as the dust settles just a little bit and everybody's in that tense moment, you know, right after the thing happened, then they erupt into applause. Right. And they're like, awesome mistake. And Good he's, one. He's really surprised by it at first. But then they say. You can learn a lot from your mistakes. Successes? Not so much. Right. So we want to help our children realize that mistakes are part of being human. And what better way than for us to model how to handle a mistake with a do-over? Well, do with admitting it, first of all, and right. then with a do-over. That takes some humility as well. Mm -hmm. Powerful parenting tool. I, I think this applies to any relationship, mm -hmm. really. It's particularly important for parents because we're training our kids how to handle their own mistakes and if we could live in a, a place of humility where we're able to do a do-over, right. request a do-over, practice a do-over, that is so much better than the guilt and shame that tends to run our behavior if we didn't have that option. Right. Here's something that I share with a lot of my clients, and I want you to connect with this. You are a benevolent, generous, loving parent. It's true. Right. Think about it. You, you want your kids to have everything. You give them more than they probably deserve. So you're obviously very generous. You're benevolent. You're loving. When you get tipped over, it's usually because there's a, a mismatch in the control and the maturity. And that causes frustration and anger and resentment. When you make those mistakes, not if, 
Is this a when or a no, if? No, it's, it's a when for sure. When you make... Vicky's the best parent I know. <laughs> and as that went sour in the hall, she's like, oh, can I have a do-over? Awesome. Okay. We all, even the best parent I know, makes mistakes, right? We all do that. So remember that you're a benevolent, generous, loving parent. You're not defined by your mistake. You're defined by those other things that I just mentioned. And remember that everything we do as a parent, we are modeling to our children what we're hoping that they learn. So if they learn that exactly. I'm not defined by my mistakes, I'm not my failures, but that I can re recover from them. Because right. there are going to be a lot of mistakes in their lives too, and we want them to be able to recover from their sliding backwards. Which is going to happen. Right. Now, you're a benevolent, generous, loving parent. You also want to be a parent who has authority. Mm -hmm. And there are two things yeah. that give you authority as a parent. Both elements are essential. You have to be able to set and enforce appropriate limits, and you have to be seen as a provider of good times and good things. Both elements are essential to give you authority. If you have one but not the other, you really don't have authority with mm -hmm. your kids. Right. That's why the do-over becomes so important, because you're going to blow it on one end or the other on a regular basis. Another advantage of the do-over is it kind of puts you back into control of the time. It gives you mm. a minute to kind of like cool down, reframe things, come at it when you're not hot-headed or your child isn't hot-headed and in the fight-or-flight mode. And so it just gives you a chance to kind of invite them to think. Generally, in mm. just prior to the do-over, you've actually invited them to fight with you. <laughs> so you want to change that invitation to be one to think. Parents get into fight-or-flight yeah. mode. Yeah, I, so. I think that point is so well stated, Vicki, because having a chance to do a do-over gives us enough of a pause that we can get out of our own chemical fight-or-flight response right. and get back into thinking mode. Notice this, when you're thinking, you have a whole lot less problem to deal with. Yeah. When you're not thinking, you make messes. Is this true? This is true of your kids too, mm -hmm. obviously. And, and in that pause, that moment of thinking, you might be able to come up with a way to get to the yes instead of the no. Mm. One of my favorite things about positive parenting is finding a way to say yes to get to that yes response. Mm -hmm. And it might be yes if or yes when. But if we can get yeah. there, yeah, it changes you get things. There, and it puts you in a different position with your kids mm -hmm. too. Remember, for authority to happen, you have to be able to set and enforce appropriate limits and be seen as a provider of good times and good things. The best way to get to that is by saying yes. Mm -hmm. We hope the idea of using a do-over as a parenting tip has helped you. Go to ParentingPowerUp.com for other tips on how to help you be the best parent you can be.